this time we'll look for a mismatch. And if we ever get a mismatch, we just die and, and go to a dead state. No, if we get no, a mismatch, we Sorry, if we get a miss, I said it wrong. If we get a mismatch, we go to, uh, we accept. Right? So let's look for mismatches. And if, a, yes? The matching, is that something you just get for free? Or is, is that something that was implemented in a way that I missed? You mean checking that the symbols yeah. in the second half match the symbols in the first half? We got that because when we read the symbols in the first half, we threw uh, representations of them on the stack. And then when we read the symbols in the second half, we matched the symbols we were reading in the second half with the symbols that were on the stack. So the comparison is what the state is? The, the comparison is comparing the symbol on the input to the symbol on the stack. You'll see it again right here. We'll do it again right now. Yeah. Because the other machine is non-deterministic. Oh, okay. this one's not going to be. No, it's going to be non-deterministic too, but it's going to be a different non-deterministic machine. If you toggle the states of a non-deterministic machine, you don't get its complement. Oh, okay, okay. You get something else, and and so it doesn't work. If it was, it's not going to work the same way. You can't just do the thing. It'll be a little right. Let's see what, what let's see what happens. Let's start up. We're trying to accept things now that are even length, but do not have their first halves matching their reverse in the second half. How do we begin? And so we're just going to push like we did before. So zero, any push an x, one any push a y. That's just what we did before. And at some point, we're going to guess that we're at the halfway point. Is that right? Seems OK. There's another way to do this, by the way. This is OK, though. But if we, if we jump early, we're going to, or jump late, we're going to be able to, uh, we will find a mismatch. So we'll have to, well, I guess we can do something with matching the if you find a mismatch and you didn't guess the right point, then we won't accept. We'll only accept mismatches that are comparing the right symbols. And we, we can do that by hopefully counting whether the stack empties out as we hit the end. So we can do the same test to make sure we get the right mismatch. So, so we are going to push everything on like we did before. Guess one to go over here. And here, before we were looking for matches, now we're going to hope to get a mismatch. That's what's going to make us accept. We're hoping to get a mismatch. Yeah. So, so, so if we get a mismatch, we go to an accept state. We still don't go to an accept state. We have to go to a state that then is going to empty out the stack. Right. Yeah. If we get a mismatch, we have to check that the mismatch occurred at a point where the number of symbols that we added onto here is going to equal the number of symbols that got popped off total. In other words, that this choice was made at the halfway point. You can make guesses in, finite, in push down machines, but you often have to check those guesses were right later on. Otherwise, you allow acceptance with wrong guesses. The guesses are fine. It gives you power. But you have to check that the guess you made works out. Well, let's see how this works. If we get a mismatch, that means a 0, y, y pop, or a 1, x, x pop. Anything else we don't accept. Anything else just gets killed, right? Well, or does it? Yeah, if you get matches, does that mean you're dead? No. No, yeah, right? Matches are OK. You can get lots of matches as long as you get one mismatch. Mm -hmm. So we have to allow for these matches. 0, x, pop, right? 0, whoops, 1, y, pop. Matches are OK. Match all you want. At some point, there's got to be a mismatch to get you to a final state. When you find that mismatch, out you go. Now we still don't accept yet, because this mismatch could have occurred at the second symbol and the fifth symbol, and the string is 200 symbols long. It, me it meant that you picked the wrong halfway spot. So here we're now going to check that this halfway spot is a legitimate halfway spot. And we do that by continuing to pop symbols off, hoping that we get to the end of our string at the exact same time that the stack is empty. If that's the case, then we pushed exactly half as many before we made this move as we pop. So, say that again, Sean. Any, any, pop. Any, any, pop. 
And what's good if we hit the end of the string, z, z. Yes. We do need it, because this has no way of getting to an accept state on an odd length string. The only way this can get to an accept state, and it's very important that the only way you can get there, is if you get a mismatch in an even length string. In fact, you can never ever get here on an odd length string. You only get there if there's no symbols left and the stuff you pushed was the same as the stuff you popped, and that means it has to be even length. Right? You want to try to fix it a little bit here to try to include this? Yeah. It's not so easy. And not if you could, it would make the machine, well, it might make the machine deterministic, which I'm pretty sure you can't do. So, so I'm not sure you can do any better than this. I'm not sure you, can, you could ever put these together in one. You might be able to, but the non-determinism would be hidden somewhere in here then. And this is easier to understand anyway, I guess. What if yeah. you had the, a different string, though? This is definitely even the way you have it set up, isn't it? W, W, R, but if you had like W with one or zero, you know, with the odd, if you included odd length palindromes like we did last it, time where you had even. Okay, so, so any palindromes and then I wanted the complement of that, yeah. then I just wouldn't have this part. And then you need to put E. And I need to have oh, something a little different there, yes. Good, that, good, good thinking, yeah. Uh, this is not the only way to do this problem. I want to do it a different way because doing it a different way will give you a sense of kind of expanding your, your repertoire of how to do these things. And it will also help you do a very, very hard problem whose solution I will sketch for you today, but whose machine I want you to actually do for homework. So I'll tell you how to do it, but you're going to have to take the idea and turn it into a machine. And it's based on another solution to this problem, which I think uses a slightly more uh, efficient use of the non-determinism. So let's do it. Different solution for this. The odd length is going to stay the same. That's just the way it was. Different way of doing this bottom half. Different idea. If we want something that's even length but isn't a palindrome, here's a halfway point. All we got to do to determine that is find a symbol here and a symbol here that mismatch, that are not the same. And the number of symbols from the left end here is the same as the number of symbols from the right end there. That's what a non-even length palindrome means. An even length non-palindrome. Everyone agree? Two symbols, this one the same from the left end, this one the same number from the right end, they mismatch. We did it this way by doing a lot of work. We actually you know, pushed on the first half, looked for the mismatch, checked for the halfway point, it's OK, but there's a nice, easier way to do it. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to read these symbols, pushing them on the stack as we go. And at some point, we are non-deterministically going to guess that this is the symbol right here that's going to be the mismatch. And we're going to remember it. And then we're just going to move across the tape, ignoring everything we see, until we non-deterministically guess that we're going to match it with this other symbol. If they mismatch, we're OK. How do we check that we made the right guess? Before we guess this, we push symbols on. We did that for a reason, because we counted how many steps it took to reach the cell. When we guess again later, we will then pop those symbols off as we read the symbols to the end to make sure that the number of slots between the big left end and this guy is the same as the number of slots between the right end and this guy. And we'll consider this a legitimate match or mismatch only when the pushing here matches the popping there. That avoids a lot of these inner loops that we were doing before. Right? If you don't get the idea yet, follow along as we build the machine. And then you'll see the machine right in front of you and we can, we can go through it in an example. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to read symbols zeros and ones and push them on the stack as we go. But we're not going to push the symbols themselves on the stack. We're just going to count. We're just going to count three or four symbols, as many as it takes. So here's what it looks like. Zero, any, x any, one, any, x any. This is different than before. We are not remembering the symbols. We're just counting how many steps it takes until we decide we're going to look at the symbol. Everybody get it?